Hi everyone, it's Karen from the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I will explain a little bit later what that intro was all about. Those of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back and you will know what it's all about. So today's video is a favourites video. So I think I've got 10 things that are favourites that I've been enjoying recently and one sort of a feel. Uh, I've got a mix of things. I've got some jewellery, some books, some TV, film, uh, beauty things. Yeah, and maybe a couple of other things. So we'll just get started. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a film. And that was the new Ghostbusters film that just came out. I think it was last week and we went to see it at the cinema. Now, I was a big fan of the original Ghostbusters film back in the 80s and I loved the second one as well. Hated the one that they did with the the women Ghostbusters. I just, I, I didn't even get all the way through that film. I thought it was terrible. Uh, and then they brought out another Ghostbusters film, I think it was last year, and really enjoyed that. And this one I really enjoyed as well. It, it was definitely uh, reminiscent of the original Ghostbusters um, film and, you know, some of the old Ghostbusters some of the old Ghostbuster actors are in that as well. And I just thought it was a really fun, uh, fun film, decent storyline, just lots of uh, action and comedy. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure, I think it must be a PG, that film, because when we went to the cinema, there was a family behind it and they had a little boy with them and he was dressed as a Ghostbuster. But honestly, he must have been no more than three. And there is a couple of what I would say would be scary scenes for small children. I mean, I don't think my grandson would be happy with it. And he's seven. So I don't know how a three-year-old sat through that and wasn't scared. But, you know, some kids are different. But highly recommend the Ghostbusters film, the new one. I can't remember the full title, but I will put it here um, when I find it. If you did like the originals, you will like these ones. So the next two things are both TV series and the first one is a series on Netflix. It's an eight part series and it is called Three Body Problem. I think it's quite new to Netflix and we binge watched that in about four, four sittings. Um, and it's a, it's a very interesting series. It kept us watching. We had to just, you know, what's going to happen next? And it's, it's basically about a group of, um, I'd say, 30-somethings who were at university together and they were all um, doing physics. And a few of them have become really, you know, respectable, respected um, physics uh, people. Um, and other ones, you know, teachers and somebody ran a, a huge um, store to do with food. So they've all been quite successful in their way. And what happens is one of them finds this, it's like a headset that you put on, It's and it's like a VR kind of thing, but it is so real when they go into this game that it's like they're there. And it is very strange, you think, what's going on here? And then somebody else gets a helmet and then somebody kills herself. And it turns out it's to do with aliens. I don't think I'm giving away too much of the story there uh, because it is quite obvious right from the beginning that that's probably what it's about. So like I say, there's eight episodes and it keeps you watching, it keeps you guessing. And it, it some, at one point you think you understand what's going on and then at other points you think, I don't know what the hell's going on here. And at the end, I was absolutely gutted that it finished on a cliffhanger and there's going to be another series. Well, at least I'm assuming there's going to be another series. But um, I highly recommend you watch Three Body Problem. There is some bits in it that you really have to listen to because they do talk some physics talk. Uh, so if you're not into that kind of thing, it might not be for you. But it was quite interesting. Um, and me and Warren had a couple of discussions while it was on about things like that, about physics and, and the universe. So it was quite an interesting watch. The third thing that I've been enjoying this month is a not so serious TV programme. And that is also on Netflix 
on Netflix and it's called The Job Lot. Now, this is quite an old series. I think it was made back in 2015 and there's three series of it. They're just half hour, well, probably not even half hour episodes. Um, and it is just so funny. It is set in a job centre uh, and it basically, you know, it's just a comedy around the lives of the people who work in the job centre and three or four of the regular people who are looking for a job that come into the job centre. It is absolutely hilarious. It really is. If you like a stupid kind of comedy um, that's easy to watch, quick to watch, then I highly recommend um, The Job Lot. So next we'll go on to beauty. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, and that is, this is the Primark uh, PS, My Perfect Colour, Perfect Finish Foundation. It's in a little tube like that. It cost me three pound. I'm wearing it today. And I just think this is a really lovely foundation. It says medium to full coverage. And I would say it was probably a medium coverage. I'm not sure about full coverage. I don't have skin that's really blemished. Um, so I probably don't need a full foundation, but I would say that was a, a good coverage um, for mature skin. This is in, I think this was the second lightest colour. I can't remember the colour it is and uh, I can't see anywhere on here where it says. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend that. If you're in Primark, that's worth picking up and having a go for £3. Um, yeah, definitely like that one. And the other thing I've been enjoying for, from Primark that is a beauty product is the PS Skin Vitamin C Moisturiser with SPF 30. And it says, it says it perfects and brightens. Now, in the tub, it's a little orange tub. It's a white cream. And it's a very, it's a very bouncy cream. So it's not like a mousse cream or a um, a loose cream. It is a very bouncy cream. And it feels a little bit like when you put on suntan lotion. You know, it's got a little bit of a drying texture to it. But it is really nice cream. Um, you don't need to put that much on. And I do feel like me, me skin feels a little bit brighter. I've only been using it for a couple of weeks. But... I do like it and I would pick that up again. That was £5 um, if you're interested in some vitamin C moisturiser. That is a very nice moisturiser and well worth the price of £5. So next I wanted to talk about a couple of probably household objects. And the first one is my waffle maker. Now I think I've definitely mentioned this on some video before recently. Uh, my daughter bought it for us from Home Bargains. You can get them on Amazon. Um, they're only around the £10 mark and this little waffle maker has changed my life, <laughs> I'm going to say. I like to eat uh, low carb slash keto pancakes for breakfast with fruit and yoghurt but they are such a pain to make. I'm useless at pancakes so Warren usually ends up making them and they, were, they are just such a pain to make. So when I got the waffle maker I thought I wonder if I could make these keto pancakes in the waffle maker. Now I've seen, um, I can't remember the woman's name, but she's from Low Carb Love on YouTube and she made them. So I thought I'm going to try that with the same recipe that I use to do the pancakes and they work perfectly. I'll put a picture there. They are so good and so simple to use. The, the, you know, so simple to do in the waffle maker. You haven't got the faff with putting them in the pan and waiting and flipping them. Just make up the mixture put a maybe a, a, a spoon and a half in the waffle maker, leave it for roughly two minutes and there you go, it's done. And I actually made up a batch, three days worth um, and put some in the freezer. Just really, really handy. I highly recommend that waffle maker. If you like pancakes um, or anything like that, then I highly recommend that. The next thing I wanted to talk about that has been a real favourite of mine uh, and I've been enjoying this for probably three months now and it is a little silicon cupcake case. But what I haven't been using it for cupcakes, what I'm using this for is to put the wax melt on the top of the wax burner because I find if you just put the wax melt in the top of there, that is such a pain to get the wax out when you want to put a different wax melt in. I think I got this idea from Caroline. Um, so I'm sure she did it on her channel. 
but it's just so much easier. You put, Instead of putting it in the top of the wax melt burner, put it in the little cupcake case and it melts and it's, it stays in the cupcake case like that. It still melts, you know, the, exactly the same, still has the same throw. And then when you're finished with it, you've got this little wax melted disc. Now this still, I've probably used this a few times now and it still smells. And what I've been doing with them, I've been putting them in little gauze bags and putting them in my drawers, my actual drawers, <laughs> not the drawers away. Um, putting them in my uh, chest of drawers just to keep it smelling nice. And you could actually just stand them in the room somewhere, but they still smell um, really nice. And I just think that is so simple, such a, a fantastically simple idea that saves the cleaning of the wax melt burner and all that hassle of doing that. So if you've got a wax melt burner, um, I definitely recommend you go and get in some of these silicon cupcake cases. And I think I got these from Flying Tiger which I mean you can get them in lots of different places but these I think it came in a pack of five for about three pound or something but well worth it. They'd... So for anyone who is new to this channel if you wondered what that intro was all about as it had um, you know four people on it. On a Sunday morning I do a collaboration with three other YouTubers who are Marie from Busy Bee Marie, Maria from Maria Crocker and Tina from Tina's Talk Time. And we've been collaborating for the past year, every Sunday morning at 7.30, we bring out a video. We all talk about the same topic, but we put our own spin on it. And the reason we call ourselves the Transatlantic Housewives of YouTube is, it's just for a bit of fun, but is Busy Bee Marie lives in Vegas. Um, so that's where the Transatlantic comes in. Myself, Tina and Maria all live in England. Marie, who lives in Vegas, is also British, but she lives in America. So that's what that intro is all about. So once you've watched my video, you can go across and watch their videos on the same topic. So they will also be talking about their favourites this week. But obviously they have their own favourites. We all put our own spin on it. So back to the favourites. The other thing I picked up from Flying Tiger recently that I thought I'd show you because I think they're so cute is these little bowls. How sweet are they? These were three pound each. I've got a purple one and a blue one. Uh, I'm not sure if they had a green one as well, but they're only three pound each and they had some bigger ones, but I just thought they were so cute. And what I wanted to use these for is to put my earrings in. You can see I've got some stud earrings in here. I'm constantly taking out my earrings and just leaving them lying around the house wherever I am. So I bought the two bowls, one's for in the sitting room on the coffee table because I'm, I'm always taking my earrings out while I'm watching the TV. So very handy to put in there. I actually got wrong off my son for putting them on the coffee table when he was here. He says, what if Milo, our cat, gets a hold of them? Thought, well, she never goes on the table, but you know, I can see a point. Um, so I thought I'd get one for the sitting room and I got one for my bedroom as well, for my bedside table, because I have been known to go to bed with my earrings in and think I don't really want them in and take them out and just dump them on the bedside table. But now I've got this little bowl to put them in. I just think they are really cute and very spring-like. So the next thing is a piece of jewellery, or two pieces of jewellery actually, and it is a necklace, this little, um, I'm not sure if it's actually sterling silver, or just, uh, I think it's probably just silver plated. And it's got like a little pink jewel in the middle. But I just thought that was really pretty. And that was reduced from £8 to £3 in Sainsbury's. And while I was browsing the jewellery, I also saw these earrings, which are the same kind of silver uh, silver, silver plated um, with the pink little pink jewels in there and I just thought they were so nice. I don't often wear dangly earrings but I do like to wear them. I just don't often see any I like but when I saw those they were reduced from £6.50 to £3. Um, so I thought yeah I'm picking those up. They're just so pretty. Don't often look at the jewellery in Sainsbury's. I, I have I look at the clothes quite often but I never really look at the jewellery but I'll definitely look at the jewellery from now on um, because they might have some good bargains. And next we'll come to books. So one of my favourite books that I've read in uh, the last couple of months is the fourth Richard Osman Murder Club book, which was The Last Devil to Die. Um, now, I really enjoy these books. 
If you've never read them before, it's about a group of friends in a care home. They're probably in their seventies, maybe eighties, um, and they solve crimes. They solve murders. Uh, one of them is one of the main women characters. She's an ex. I'm sure it's MI five agent. It's just it, they're lovely books. They're about. I mean, yeah, there is murders in them, and they're solving the murders. But the the characters are really relatable. You know, Richard Osman has really built up the characters over the four books, so you feel like you've really got to know them. And this one, I found it's it's funny, it's poignant, and it is sad. I did cry um, at the end of this book, so trigger warning for anybody. Uh, it does have dementia in it. It's not a very big part of it, but it is in it. Um, and yeah, I did cry at the end of it. But I've really enjoyed these Richard Osman books. He said he's not going to write any more for a while, but there will be more to come because the stories definitely aren't finished being told. Um, and I would love to to read more about them. So, yeah, highly recommend the Richard Osman Murder Club series um, and The Last Devil to Die. I don't think you have to have read any of the other three to read this one, or I think they all stand alone, but you do get to know the characters a bit more if you read the whole series. Now, the last thing, those were all my favourites, really enjoyed all of those. This one is probably a fail for me, and it is a book. And I did mention this in a video recently that I said it was on my um, to-be-read list, and it's called Days at the Murasaki Bookshop, um, and it is by Satoshi Yagas Yagasawa. Um, sorry if I've mispronounced that name. Now, I had high hopes for this book. I love the cover of it. I love anything to do with books. So I thought I'm going to love anything to do with a bookshop. And it says it's an international bestseller. Um, and I think the, the guy actually won a, an award for um, first his first novel, this one, his first novel. And it's a, it's, it's a strange book. It's about a girl who, at the beginning of the book, a boyfriend, she realises he's got another girlfriend and he's getting engaged to her and she's absolutely devastated. And she leaves where she's living and she goes to uh, help her uncle in his bookshop in another part of Japan. This is set in Japan. Her uncle's wife left him five years previously and it it just it just I don't I don't know what else to say apart from that. It kind of tappy lappies along. Uh, she she reads a lot of books, so you get to know about some of the books she's reading, which you know it, it's quite interesting. I like to watch YouTube videos where people are talking about books, so I didn't mind reading about people talking about books. She sits in a lot of coffee shops and has a coffee and reads a book, and then her uncle's wife comes back. And there's some mystery around that. And she ends up going on a trip with his wife. And there's a little bit of mystery around that. And, and then it's the end of the book. And it's just, I don't, I really don't know what this is about. I'd say it was probably about relationships. The, the characters are quite well written. Um, it is a night. It is a nice book to read. It's a nice, slow, steady, nothing's really happening book. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but that is, that for me was disappointing. Luckily, it's not a very thick book, so it didn't take as long to read it. Yeah, but I don't think I would read any more books from this author. Um, if you've read this book, let us know what you think, because I just, I didn't get it. I don't know what the hype is about, if it's an international bestseller. I don't understand why. Apart from the fact that it made us want to go and sit in a coffee shop and read a book. So if that was the same... It worked but no that wasn't for me so those are my 10 favorites and my one fail um from things that i've enjoyed and not enjoyed recently remember to go across and watch busy b marie tina from tina's talk time and maria crocker and see what their favorites are recently i'm interested to see what they are as well because like i usually say we don't tell each other so remember to go across and watch those. I will leave uh, links to their channels in the description box below. And I will leave links to any of these products in the description box if they are still available anyway. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.